Hello everybody and welcome back to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to create this paint roller effect using dynamic paint. We're going to be going through the dynamic paint process, baking out an image sequence, creating a material, and then rendering it out. To get started with this effect, we first need to model out the paint roller itself. To do this, we're not going to need the default cube, so of course, delete it. From there, we can press Shift A and add in a cylinder. We're going to rotate the cylinder 90 degrees along the Y axis, and then if we open up our Properties panel underneath the Item tab, I'm going to set the X and the Y 2.5 for both of these. If we press Ctrl A and apply the rotation, now the dimensions are in the correct spots. Let's go ahead and press Ctrl A and apply the scale as well, and then bevel out the edges. I'm going to go into Edit Mode, select both of the faces on the side, Ctrl B to bevel, and you can use the scroll wheel to drag it upwards. That looks pretty good. And now for the handle itself, this is going to be pretty simple. Let's go ahead and add in a cylinder. We'll rotate this along the Y axis once again and scale it down. I'm going to move it over to the side and place it here. And make sure that these two are separate objects. You don't want them the same or this tutorial is not going to work. There we go, we've modeled out our handle, and now it's time to actually learn how to rotate the paint roller itself. To do this, we could select our paint roller, add in a location rotation keyframe, move it up a little bit, add in another one, but this is just a pain, and that's not gonna even look that great. Instead, we're gonna be using constraints. To do this, we're first gonna go over to the constraints tab, which is this tab right here, add a constraint, and select transformation. The transformation constraint allows you to take a location of an object and map it to a location rotation scale of the object that you have selected. In this case, we're going to be using the location of this handle and mapping it to the rotation of our object right here. So as the paint roller handle moves up, this object is going to be rotating. Now we need to figure out what are the values that we need to put in for the Y axis. Since I'm going to be using the handle to go up the Y axis, that is the location value that we're going to be using. First though, we're going to select both of our objects and make sure you have the object selected. I'm going to press control P and parent the paint roller to the handle. So as this moves up, you can see it's moving the paint roller itself. So now what we need to do is a little bit of math. We need to figure out the circumference of our object right here. And to figure out the circumference of a circle, we need to take the radius times two times pi. Or in other words, you can take the diameter times pi. We already know what the diameter is if we press N and look underneath the dimensions tab. You can see the diameter is 0.5 meters. So all we have to do now is take pi times 0.5. Pi is a very long number and I'm only gonna be using five decimals of it. So type in 3.14159 and then we can times that by the diameter which is 0.5. So times 0.5 equals and this is the number. I'm only gonna be taking these three values here, 1.57, control C that, and we're gonna map that to the max value of the Y. So we can hover over the max value, control V to paste that object in. Then of course we need to map that location to the rotation of our cylinder. So select rotation. We're gonna be rotating it along the X axis, so make sure this is the one that you use, and setting this over to 360. So as the paint roller moves up 1.57, it's gonna rotate 360 degrees. If we then select our handle and move it upwards, you can see nothing is happening. That is because we need to actually set the X source from X over to Y, since it's gonna be using the Y location instead of the X. So now what happens if we select our handle and move it up, you can see it's still not working, and that's because I think we need to apply the rotation. So if we apply the rotation to our handle, then if we move it up, what the Also, one of the most important things with this constraint is you actually need a target. In this case, I haven't even set a target for our constraint, so that is why it's not working. So select the target by clicking the eyedropper tool and selecting the cylinder. Now once we select our handle and move it upwards, you can see it's now rotating. Currently though, it's rotating in the wrong direction, so let's select our cylinder and set this to a negative 360. Once we do that, we can select our handle, move it upwards, and you can see it's moving up just like that. But you also might notice if we go in the negative y direction, it stops rotating. That is because extrapolate is turned off. Make sure you turn that on 
and now it will actually take into account the negative values. There we go, our paint roller is working and now we are ready to set up the dynamic paint. Here we go, I've added in a plane and now let's set up the dynamic paint. Before we do that though, let's go ahead and make our scene a little bit more interesting by adding some displacement to our paint roller itself. I'm going to go into edit mode, control R, and add in a couple of loop cuts. Once we do that, we can go over to the modifier tab, add in a displacement modifier, select new, and over in the texture panel, we'll set it over to clouds, and then just bring down the size, let's go with 0.15, and then the strength value over here, we'll drag it a lot lower somewhere around 0.1 or so. We can also add in a modifier, subdivision surface, to make it even better. Right click and go shade smooth. I'm also going to drag the subdivision surface above the displacement and I think that will look even better. Now that we've done that, we are ready to set up the dynamic paint. To do this, we'll select our plane and go over to the dynamic paint settings, the physics tab, and click on dynamic paint. Make sure the type is set to canvas and add this in. For the format, we're going to select image sequence, and then here is the resolution. Since this is a pretty close up shot, we are going to want a high resolution, so let's go with a value of 2000. The end frame, I only want this animation to run for 200 frames, so I'm going to set that to 200. And then for the sub steps, I'm going to bring that up to 4. We are going to be animating the handle moving up and down, so just in case it moves a little bit too fast, the sub steps is going to help, so set that to 4. Over in the output tab, we need to make sure that we set an output of where we want our images to go to. So I'm going to select this button here and navigate to a folder. Once you have found your folder, you can go ahead and click accept. And then for the UV map, select the UV map in the drop down menu. I'm also going to make sure pre multiply alpha is turned on and then that we export the paint maps and not the wet maps. And then for the brush itself, we're going to select the paint roller, click on dynamic paint, set the type to brush and then add this in. For the paint color, you don't really need to select anything because you can change it in the material later, but for now we're just going to leave it at the default blue. You also want to make sure that the paint handle is above the canvas itself, so drag it up slightly, select the paint roller, go into edit mode, and make sure it is still underneath just like that. Now we can animate. I'm going to go into top view and select the handle and drag it down. I'm going to rotate it around here select the frame number frame one and add in a location rotation keyframe. Every 40 frames, I want it to go up, down, up, down, up, down. So we're gonna go to frame 40, drag it all the way up to about here or so, add in a location rotation, go down to frame 80, drag it down, rotate it, location rotation, Let's go ahead and play our simulation to see what it looks like. And here is the result. I think that looks very good. So now let's go ahead and set the end frame to 200 and then bake out an image sequence. Select your canvas, scroll down to the bake tab right here. Make sure you save your project just in case this crashes. And once you've done that, click on bake. Now it's on to the materials. Select your canvas and create a new material. Make sure you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled so you can actually import an image sequence. From there, press Shift A, add in a texture and a image sequence texture right here. Navigate to where the images are and we can see mine are right here. I'm gonna press A to select everything and import image sequence. Over in this texture, I'm gonna make sure auto refresh is turned on. And then if we control shift left click on this, press Z and go into material view, we can play this and this is the effect that we're getting. It already looks pretty cool, but we can make it look even better with some bump and some glossiness. Next up on our list is to add in a background. So I'm going to add in a color and then a mix RGB and we'll place that here. If we then take the alpha and plug that into the factor and set this to the bottom input, this top value now controls the background of our canvas. So you can add in a background texture or anything like that. I think I'm just going to leave it at the white color. So now if we play this, this is the effect. Next up, I'm going to change the color of our paint just a little bit. So I'll add in a color hue saturation and we'll place that and then we'll place that right here. And then for the value, I'm going to turn that down just slightly. And then I'll bring the saturation up. Probably, probably something like that is going to look good. To add in some bump to our canvas, we can press shift A and add in a texture and a noise texture and we'll place that here. And then we're going to add in a vector and a bump node. 
I'm going to take the factor and plug that into the height and then the normal into the normal of the principled shader. The strength of this, I'm going to set much lower. Let's go with a value of 0.1. Over in the noise texture, I'm going to bring the scale up to 8, the detail up to about 5, and then the roughness value, this is the one that we're going to want to change. Let's go with a value of about 0.9 and then make sure that we have the color plugged into the base color of the principled shader. Control shift, left click on this. And there we go. Now we have some bump on our canvas and that is looking very good. For the glossy look, we need to add in a converter and a color ramp and we'll place that here. If we then take the color value, plug that into the factor, we'll control shift left click on this. This is the effect that we're getting. I'm going to switch this over to constant and then drag the white value closer, something just like that. So now we have two different values. We have this one, which controls the paint color itself, and we can drag this up and down if we want to. And then this one right here controls the canvas. I want the canvas to be slightly glossy, so I'll drag that down just slightly. And then for the paint color itself, since it's just getting painted, we want it to look pretty wet. So somewhere around here is gonna be good. Let's plug this into the roughness of the principal shader. Control shift left click on this. As you can see, this looks much better now. The paint actually looks like it's wet and you can control that wetness with the color ramp right here. If you want it to look more wet, drag this down. If you want it to look more dry, you can drag it up. For the paint roller, we're going to be using some similar nodes. I'm going to select the noise texture, holding shift, select the bump and the principal shader, control C, select our roller, create a new material. We'll delete that, control V, and then we'll take this and plug it into the surface. The roughness, I'm going to drag down all the way to 0.1 so it looks really glossy, just like that. And then for the base color, I'm going to select the blue right here. For the bump node, I'm actually going to bring the strength up to 0.4, and I think this will look much better. Once you do that, you might need to change the color just slightly. And there we go, we can see now the colors match, and now we can select our handle. And for this one, it's just going to be a very metallic shader. I'll set the roughness down, the metallic up, and then for the base color, I'll just drag it down to a gray. For this part, I just decided to speed it up because it's the final steps in creating the animation. What I did here is I selected the default lamp and set the strength to about 1500 and brought the color up. I brought the size up as well so it's a little bit softer in the shadows. Over in the world settings, I set it down to black and then in the EV settings, make sure you go underneath the film tab and turn on transparency. You can also turn on ambient inclusion and screen space reflections and underneath the color management tab, set the look to high contrast. Since this is transparent, we're going to go over to the compositor and add in an alpha over node. Set the look to whatever you want, I just went with a black and then I set an output over in the output tab and then I rendered out my animation. Here is the final result. But there you go, that is how you create a paint roll effect using Blender. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial, and if you're not subscribed, make sure you click that subscribe button down below. This will really help me out in creating future tutorials. If you created something cool, I would love to see it, so make sure to send it to me on Instagram at BlenderMadeEasy. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next one.